Hey, it's Claude Von Stroke from Dirty Bird. We're a 16 year old record label that just released an NFT project called Flight Club. I'm with the Edge of NFT guys, and they're bringing the best alpha on music and NFTs. So stay tuned. Hey, all you NFT curious listeners, check out today's episode for the scoop on how the Dirty Bird Flight Club music NFT project is reaching new heights. What vinyl record our guest today had the foresight to purchase at 11 years old. And how NFT Genius is continuing to change the NFT game with Rebel Rabbits and Gaia Marketplace. All this and more on today's episode. Enjoy. Welcome to the Edge of NFT podcast with your hosts, Jeff Kelly, Ethan Janney, and Josh Krieger. We aim to bring you not only the top 1% of what's going on with NFTs today, but what will stand the test of time. We explore the nuts and bolts and the business side, but also the human element of how NFTs are changing the way we interact with the things that we love. This podcast is for the futurists and dreamers, the disruptors and creators, the fans and connectors, and the makers and doers that are pumped about this ecosystem and driving where it goes next. And today's dreamer, disruptor, and doer on this sponsored spotlight episode is Claude Von Stroke, founder of Dirty Bird Records, an independent electronic music record label, festival producer, and collective based out of the West Coast. Claude is a renowned DJ, producer, and innovator who recently launched Dirty Bird Flight Club, a unique generative NFT project that we will hear all about on today's episode. Welcome, Claude. Thank you for having me. Good so to have you cool. Here. Yeah, man. I, I think we, we were talking about a little bit before we came on here that uh, we're all huge uh, consumers of, and in some cases, producers of music. And, and this is one of those ones that uh, when, it, when it hit the calendar, man, we were like, you know, super excited about. We love talking to any and everything music here. And of course, NFTs, man, music and NFTs have started to intersect in all these crazy ways. And, and so we're really excited about that. And, and and events, right? Like we've had many shows on on the power of event ticketing. We had Yellow Heart on talking about um, all the challenges in the ticketing industry. And, and you guys sort of, you know, you have that experience. You've been doing your festival for so long and, and you kind of put all this together and said, let's let's disrupt things, you know? Yeah, thank you. Absolutely, man. So look, we know and we've heard the the intersection of visual art and music has always been a part of Dirty Bird. But now we got Dirty Bird Fight Club. So how did the origins of Dirty Bird and also your relationship with BirdCap influence this project? Yeah, so I have been hiring like a pop surrealist kind of semi-famous or really famous muralist or painter every year for about the last 10 years to do all the album cover art for our label so i hire them for one year and they do like anywhere between 12 to 25 covers and those are all the music releases on our label and then i always buy paintings from them and just so my house is just full with all this wacky artwork that i like it's just a, i like a very certain kind of thing so i've just found all these artists and like reading high fructose or juxtaposed or on IG or whatever, going to art galleries, going to like think space. And uh, so I also collect comic books from like the eighties, like old Marvel X-Men. And I've been running this record label for 16 years. So all these things kind of really came together. And I decided that the best person to do a generative, generative NFT would be, bird cap who did our art last year because he's very quick and he's really great at characters and it just looked like it was going to work and he was amazing on this project yeah that's something else man. yeah like, these these pieces are beautiful you know thanks yeah super cool like how job. it sounds like you're saying he operates pretty quickly like what was that uh like what was it like like from inception to you getting into that spot where you're ready to, to share it with the world well this is you know, like how you do a project and sometimes you're just banging your head against the wall and you can't get anything to work out. And it's just like, yeah, I could maybe force this project to happen, but it's going, yeah. it's just brutal. I had that experience the first time I tried to 
break into NFTs. But then this time I kind of like said, fuck it. And then I came back like six months later and I'm like, I really want to get into the space. The generative thing seems like a really good thing. And then all the stuff just came together so serendipitously. Like I was at our festival and the woman that does all of my creative direction, like on my weird stages and stuff, she's like, oh yeah, my boyfriend just programmed this whole NFT. He ended up being the guy that did Roboto's. So we hired him to do it. I called Birdcap. He was like shopping for Teenage Ninja Mutant Turtle statues in a comic book store. I'm like, okay, you're the exact right guy for this. <laughs> and then he's like, yeah, I'll do it. If you explain to me what you're talking about, he's like, how do you get your caveman money into the internet? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And then, and then all these people started coming in from all these different places, like the two people that run our Discord. I met backstage because they won a giveaway to come see me and Green Velvet play at the Brooklyn Mirage. And they were super into NFTs. And I just started talking to them backstage. It was crazy. That's amazing, dude. Isn't it, that like it, reflective of the entire like world of NFTs? Like ultimately, right? Like once you get into the the world of you know everything we're experiencing in this ecosystem, it's so collaborative and so serendipitous and so like you know, free flowing in, in different ways, like shit gets done. Yeah. Like without like, you know, some big project, like crazy project plan or, you know, weird Gantt chart or whatever, you know, and uh, time and again, did we talk to people that have launched projects and we get a similar story to what you just uh, conveyed to us, man. It's amazing. Yeah. That's I mean, like the ON one force just came on the show and was talking about how they just casually all got together and it just, it's just like momentum. Right. Um, yeah. Is it, is that similar or different than like how some of your uh, music production has, has gone in the past? Uh, it's, <laughs> my music production is, it's different because it, this is much, this is like making a film almost. This is like definitely a group effort. And my music is much more of a, just a me effort in my studio. But I will say the the releasing of the music is a massive group effort. So in some ways it's very similar, like the record label, the marketing team, is all kind of similar to this. So I did have a lot of experience, but I'll also tell you that like the first time I tried to do this was like, it didn't work. I was trying to get on, on that first like nifty gateway one of one kind of thing. And I was trying to make my stuff too perfect and trying to get everyone to like come i still have these i'm gonna eventually release all these amazing ones but it was like no one responds you can't get anyone at those companies to respond because everyone's hitting them up so right away i didn't like it because we're used to just like bootstrapping and going renegade and just rocking it and like having these crazy gatekeepers is so annoying, like at Nifty and Super Rare, and you can't even get anyone on the phone. And it was like so gatekeepery that it was just a big mess for me. I, it didn't work. I didn't get it out. And so I was like, fuck NFTs. And then I was just kept watching it. And I was like, I love NFTs. <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> I can't say fuck NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> sounds great, like a, sounds well, like a passionate relationship <laughs> right. I, I i i can relate i can relate um yeah i mean we 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 we've got our first drop coming out soon um and you know it was one of those things where like how much polish do we add and how do we do this and and you know yeah. we're we're methodical entrepreneurs that even if we're agile and you just gotta just hit hit the gas and just go right yeah and i guess one of the things we love about them and i'm sure you can relate to is that they're little packages of surprises right and um you know you're able to do cool things for for your fans that support you in in a direct way and we hear there's some exciting news this week that you're eardropping some unreleased music to um folks that have a bird that, that happened last week but yes we did it it's uh right after our so at our festival camp out we had like a special secret party for bird holders it, the whole collection came out like five days before our festival which is kind of insane on our part just a workload wise but then we flew bird cap to camp out and secretly just surprised made a party that i dj'd at in a different area 
and bird holders came and they got to screen print this one of one artwork that he made just for that party and they screen printed it at the party and they were just ha hanging him up drying on uh, close pins on like a like they were like drying your underwear and uh while i played a hip-hop set and he and they were finishing a huge mural like in real time this whole time it was kind of cool that's but that's epic the second part of that i forgot <laughs> oh i was just kind of curious what kind of other utility comes with uh, uh these, right these right. uh the being a member of the fight club the music release right that came out a few days after we got back we airdropped everyone a version of that screen print a little bit edited to be more towards the music release and then there were five or six tracks that did not come out anywhere else that were the unlockable for that airdrop and so only the bird holders got that music release and we are going to be doing a bunch of that stuff like i'm going to be djing in new york on thursday at nyc nft or is it nft nyc i don't know one of those two <laughs> and I, uh, I, i've messed it up a few times we have like, uh, I think we have 150 spaces for wallet holders. And then we're having a mint sellout party that we promised we would have in LA on November 6th. That's just for bird holders. And that's at the outside part of Academy. I don't know if anybody lives in LA, but that is also happening. And I mean, even though we're doing a lot of IRL, I do want to try to get it into the metaverse a little bit more because IRL is really hard. Like uh, we will definitely integrate this into our things that we're already doing, but making parties just for this is definitely difficult. Well, we will, we'll connect you with our boy, Eric, that did uh Rita Ona's uh, metaverse concert. And um, he's done a lot of metaverse concerts. I think, I think that's a great sort of utility that to add as well. And, you know, you've got, fans all over the country that that want us that can't always make it to a camp out right yeah. um so that's the number one complaint about doing an irl it's like nobody can go from india but so. but now we have like these uh, ability to rent out your nft for um event that's coming out so so those folks can still benefit in some way that's a cool idea i didn't even i need to get into that more like oh i can rent out my pass or like sell someone my pass for a day or something that's really interesting i have actually done uh i dj'd in the tie-dye ninjas dojo right before our mint or right or two days after our mint and that was fun and we also created one thing i know that we're going to be able to do this is because during covid dirty bird, dirty bird created 11 shows it was like 29 hours a week of twitch dj live streaming so basically i learned obs from top to bottom and i know everything about streaming nice <laughs> and uh so we're definitely going to get into that right on yeah obs is it's, it's a little bit intimidating at first but uh yeah yeah congratulations on that yeah streaming <laughs> streaming is weird when you first get into it because you're like well, I yeah gotta put it's this a nightmare there right? and just passwords and keys yeah, and, yeah. Uh, big up to subset this guy subset mark he is the best at streaming ever if anyone needs help streaming just hit up subset he walked me through the whole thing from day one that's awesome yeah Oh, I have to give a shout out here, by the way. And speaking of serendipity to uh, Josh and I have a mutual friend named James Mandel. He's actually the guy who sang the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme song. Oh, we wow. We brought that up earlier. So, like, somebody had to <laughs> sing it. <you> know? <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, well, that's Birdcap pretty... is obsessed with uh, the turtles. Yeah, that's he what you said. Like he was like 250 <laughs> statues in his house, I think. Nice. Well, we'll have, wow. have to hook him up with James, maybe get like a like a signed uh, item or <laughs> something like that. So, super cool. I wanted to ask you about the uh, the 9,090 NFTs from Dirty Bird. Um, they sold out in three minutes. Uh, important success for the project, man. Congratulations. Um, Thank how, you. How, how do you plan on continuing uh, to grow your community of the of collectors and fans? And uh, how can we get our trees to sell out in three minutes? Go. <laughs> uh, yeah, good question. Oh, oh I will. No, this the first, is not the, the, the first question is really the question there. Yeah, go ahead. But the second question is really important, I think, because 
so in music, I'm always just doing it myself and just kind of relying on my own little mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but in this world, I don't think that would have worked if we hadn't teamed up with tie dyes, space punks, wicked craniums. We mm -hmm. went, we like befriended all of these other teams mm -hmm. and they were giving us advice, sending their people to our mint. Like it, and if you can get anything like three or four other projects to kind of be like, yo, you guys check out this project. It kind of just creates that whole little thing that you need, which mm -hmm. is that little FOMO buzz for the 20 minutes that your thing is up. And then it's like, if you can get that little bump of buzz, I feel like it will work right now, at least who knows in like, I feel like there's going to be like 50 projects a day for the next year and that might not work yeah in like six months that was something fun we noted about uh frogland who came on the show um they also uh, wicked craniums is, is kind of one of the their partners as, as well as the gutter cats and the gutter rats and those projects have a lot of foundation you know and they decided if you haven't heard of it to make a met like a little metaverse called new pangea where all these different nfts can like play and and have land and stuff like that yeah. so yeah, I think Wicked Cranium was my first NFT. This guy, Jack, who was kind of advising us, works at Wicked Craniums. And I just bought one. And I, I ended up DJing at one of their parties, too. Just like in a in a room next to Cantor's Deli. It's like 50 people. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I just went over and I'm like, whatever. Cool. Give me a Wicked Craniums hat and I'll play the set. It'll be fun. Nice. <laughs> And I guess this wraps into like the sort of first part of my question there is like the ways that you kind of plan on continuing to engage uh, with fans and, and holders right. and stuff like that. What do you, what do you got in the works or what kind of thoughts do you have on that? Well, probably know you have to have a roadmap to get anybody to even look at your project. So we're, we're about two thirds, three quarters away through our current roadmap and we're developing our 2.0 our, our 1.0, when I really look at it, is kind of like a standard roadmap that everyone kind of did. I mean, we donated to charity. We dropped bird, rare birds to people. We are doing a merch drop. All the stuff that you would expect. We're giving away tickets to all our... Well, that's one thing that you can't really do like Josh was talking about. We do a lot of ticket giveaways to our events that we actually have. Like we gave away camp out tickets. We're gonna give away camp in tickets. Camp in is in Florida. That's about to get announced. We have barbecues all spring. We'll give away tickets to that. But in our 2.0 roadmap, we're gonna do something that everyone hates here when I talk about 2.0 stuff before we did it. <laughs> so I don't know how much I'm supposed to say. Oh. I get myself in trouble all the time because well, I unfortunately it's our everything. job to try to get the scoop on everything, even if <laughs> right. it's your job to like not say anything. So you, you don't you have to go into three the formidable weeds, but, opponents but, here. Yeah, give let's just say we have let's just say we have a highly developed like four year old subscription service that has a lot of features, and it maybe these projects will be able to handshake down the line. Sounds good. That's Which will make works. it automatically <laughs> worth a whole bunch of money. Subscription That's awesome, service. Man. Yeah. It's, we have work a subscription service called, we have it called the bird feed. Inside the bird feed, you get a completely different release schedule that doesn't even come out on Dirty Bird. It's completely exclusive. You get everything that comes out on Dirty Bird. You get huge discounts on all the clothing. You get to buy tickets before they come out. So like people who want to go to Dirty Bird Camp Out and get in the cheapest tier, we do like half the tickets in bird feet before they even go on sale. It's kind of like the whitelist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a great book by the guy. Uh, gosh, I forget the name name of the, the guy who wrote it. He wrote a couple of great books in entrepreneurship, but there, uh, there's, a, there's a good book that's all about all the different types of subscription services that you can create, you yeah. know, the boxes and, and, and recurring, recurring revenues right. and all the kind of fun things that people enjoy, you know? So, so just so, imagine if you had a bird, maybe you could get into this without paying the fiat fee. And then once you traded it, you wouldn't be able to get in anymore, but you mm -hmm. could still get in with the fiat. 
Like, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the guy's name is, by the way, is uh, Wer John Werolo. He also wrote, he, he wrote Built to Sell, but then he wrote this book that's all about Oh, I think I've read yeah. Built to Sell. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very popular uh, yeah. entrepreneurship. Book. I just, uh, I, I think so many teams would be envious of this built in community that you've built for years that, that is already into gritty, creative stuff right like like you have the perfect community to experiment with and and just keep doing cool shit over time and um nfts give you the sort of the tool set that that probably just didn't exist before this right yeah and i will say that was a one of our other main objectives when we minted is i think maybe 0.001 percent of dirty bird fans even had a wallet so our main objective was just onboarding the entire like six weeks that we went into it. All we did was try to onboard people. We didn't even do any marketing. It was just relentless onboarding of Dirty Bird fans. And I still think we only probably got like 5%, maybe 7% of Dirty Bird fans in. So like that is a big thing still for us. The onboarding program, getting people into it. It's a long-term, long-term project. Yeah, man. Yeah. And it's even, even, you know, like Gary V spent a lot of time doing that with his V friends project. I think it's on our, yeah, that's where we got the idea. Yeah. Somebody just said, you know what Gary V did? He just onboarded all of his friends. And I'm like, well, that's what we should be doing. We should just onboard all these fans and just, that's it. That's all we should do. Yeah, man. It makes a ton of sense. You know, one of the other things I think about community is, is like that shared set of beliefs, right? Like this, this, this vibe, you know, that happens within communities and it develops over time. And it was cool to see that, that one of the things on your roadmap was this, uh, this, this give back. There's a, a music related charity called notes for notes where you guys are going to be donating like 25 grand. Can you give us a little more uh, detail on that? Actually, we had the community vote internally. We picked out about 12 charities that all had something to do with music, but could accept Ethereum. And then we kind of whittled it down to three. And then we actually had the bird holders vote on which one they thought was the best. And note for notes was the winner. And we're just really happy. They sent us the nicest email I've ever got from a company ever in my life. They were so happy to receive the money and a bunch of kids will be able to learn how to make music. And it's just a great thing all around. And so, and our, and we didn't choose it. Like our team, our people chose the charity, which is even cooler, I think. Oh, that's awesome. People really, it's one of those things that gets, always gets lost in, in education is, is arts and, and music. And, um, you know, one thing that's so essential about it beyond, uh, beyond just having the cultural benefits and, and sort of like, you know, musicians can be develop their math skills just by developing their music skills, stuff like that. But also, like with with underprivileged youth, people are going through difficult times. And music is such a wonderful way to kind of process, you know, difficult things and you know express those things and get and move through them. So um, that that's really awesome that you guys are facilitating this for younger people. Thank you. Yeah, I was always terrible at math, but I see that the correlation is really there, like arranging and just moving stuff around. It's very mathematical. So somehow maybe I am good at math, but not really. you're good at math. Think... That's half the battle. You have to you have to be willing to say that you're good at math. <laughs> well, we're gonna break out the uh, the old trigonometry quiz at the end of the show. Oh, so no. we'll see for real. But uh, my but son no. Jasper is actually taking the class that I failed. But I uh, no. keep trying to like be like I didn't fail. You can get an A. <laughs> well, let's ask this question: What happens when you add a C, an E, and a G together? <laughs> it's seg. <laughs> it's a C major chord. Okay, you're not that oh. great at math. <laughs> All right, Ethan, flexing your music knowledge over here. Yeah. <laughs> right on. So, uh, but yeah, no, the, the, just to highlight it too, like I was looking at, uh, at Notes for Notes. Um, so like recording studio environments across 23 different studios, 11 states, 14 cities. They also have an online component. That's amazing, man. That is really, really uh, uh, an impactful organization and an uh, amazing resource. So cool. Yeah, thanks. And if we can, like, if we all, all of a sudden get a ton of aftermarket stuff, we will probably donate again. Right on. That's beautiful. Amazing. 
Well, let's let's take a step back for a moment. You talked a little bit about um, your 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 passion for NFTs as a whole. I'm I'm sort of curious, what else are you inspired by in the world of NFTs, and are there any particular projects or ideas that that get you pumped? I watch YouTube videos. Like I don't know about you guys, but I watch YouTube videos like every night about NFTs. <laughs> I I am obsessed with certain like set up i know that we're not going to become a dow because that's not really like we're not like a financial nft that's not our thing and i know that like everyone's like maybe we should start staking you know da, da, da. but that's not i one thing i have learned in life is like stay in your lane and do what you do really well and it eventually will come everything will work out <laughs> but i am kind of obsessed with that whole like cyber kongs model of like i i had i did i managed to get into kaiju kings and head down and some of these little ones that are like the copies of, of the cyber kongs and i really i'm like how many days until the government finds out about this <laughs> you know <laughs> <shuts it all. laughs> because I, I need to know like right before <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah did you um did you see the gambling apes too no is that okay a new one? no no that these guys have been around a little while too but um maybe launched around the same time uh you got these gambling apes they're going to be running a casino in decentraland and the profits of the oh, casino wow. get get dripped into each ape holder wow that's, that's a fun. great idea yeah, so that's hilarious. So if if we want to take this to um the the dirty bird situation, you got this uh you got these metavert concerts that are produced where um uh, yeah. you could you could drip in a little bit yeah. of the ticket yeah. revenue to the dirty bird holders and then they could then you have uh 10,000 uh ticket promoters for you. Yeah, that is interesting. See, you just had a great idea. Yeah. Uh, see, that's not that's not outside of our wheelhouse, but it not still has a value to everyone. It's a cool idea. Yeah, yeah man. Write oh. that down somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you don't, just, you can just listen to this yeah. part of the podcast again. When you're back so. on YouTube, just tune into your clip here. You'll get. <laughs> yeah, I'll just it. watch the it. whole thing. It'll be in the transcript. But yeah. but, but I guess like. Uh, have you also followed some of the other music projects like one of and opulus and um you know mandolin and 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 what they're trying to do in terms of um sort of creating a stronger connection between the fan and uh their favorite talent i have i haven't looked at those like really in depth but i am kind of studying how to put out music where the fans are the owners of like half or all of the record because it's very complicated because I'll put it to you this way. So if I release a record on Dirty Bird, Dirty Bird collects all the money that that record makes. So they have to collect it from Beatport, Track Source, Spotify, Apple, blah, 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 right? If I do a record and I give it to let's say I sell the rights to NFT boy 1328 or whatever. I can't write the Ethereum contract so that all that money goes to him. I still have to do all the work. Yeah, that's annoying. So there still has to be a record label element. So I'm just trying to figure, like maybe down the line, somebody's going to write a contract that is like a distribution contract that will suck everything in and you actually can sell a piece of music to someone and give them the whole thing but still then hbo will call and be like hey we want to put this in 30 seconds of a radio in the bathroom on succession that com that combo is not going in the ethereum contract you know what i'm saying it's very mm -hmm. difficult and tricky it is but man the future is nfts on nfts on nfts you know what i'm saying yes, so you can right. you can add those layers in <laughs> and uh, some cool shit will come out so um well look this is amazing man so cool to hear from you about everything that dirty bird is up to about the uh, dfc dirty bird flight club like amazing amazing stuff man we want to 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, we want to we want to follow everything you're doing and, and support it any way we can. Um, we also want to take a moment and get to know you uh, a little better personally and get your personal perspective on some questions. Uh, so we have this segment that we call Edge Quick Hitters. It's a, a fun, quick way to get to know you. There's 10 questions. We're looking for short, single word or a few word answers, but you can feel free to okay. expand if you, uh, you know, if you get the urge. You ready to dive in? Sure. All right, let's do it. All right, question number one. What is the first thing you remember ever purchasing in your life? Besides like candy bars, <laughs> it's like an actual purchase. Sure. Up to you, sir. Uh, I, uh, I remember sneaking out of this middle school field trip and going, believe it or not, I went to a record store by myself and bought Run DMC, Run DMC first album on vinyl nice. and then snuck back into the field trap and it did not get caught. And I, oh man i was like 11 <laughs> is there a chance you have that freaking vinyl record still i i might i have a big vinyl collection over here i don't know where it is but that i probably do have it i wouldn't have thrown it away yeah that's amazing man. great purchase too question number two what is the first thing you remember ever selling in your life I was born in Cleveland and then we moved to Detroit and I just had a very classic like Midwest, just like a little kid in the suburbs. We, I sold lemonade with my brother on the corner. Like we never made any money, but we did all those things like brownies, all the stuff like where your mom's like, just go out to the corner and don't bother me for like three hours. Yeah, you have to do what you have to have done what one of our other guests did was they they had some sort of dice game that they included in their lemonade well, stand or you could like Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't that clever at that age. <laughs> uh, that's funny. All right, question number 3. What is the most recent thing you purchased? I think I just bought like a Voltron number 1 CGC 9.8 just like uh, speculating that that is going to come around because everybody's buying up all these IPs. I feel like somebody's going to do Voltron. So I bought the num the first comic. And you got a good hunch. That's in, like, awesome. The highest grade. If no one knows what CGC 9.8 is, it's just like the highest grade. There is like a little bit above that, but they don't really, nobody really has any 9.9s. Not yet. Uh, question right. <laughs> number four. Uh, what is the most recent thing you sold? Well, I'm selling music every day. I mean, I'm just going to pump my new record release that just came out because I'm selling Do it, it. Right? Is that yeah. kind of selling? Hell yeah, it does. I have a, so this guy that I found, um, Lebelski from LA and he was uh, big on our streaming network. He created this whole modular synthesis a show where he did everything from scratch and all you have no idea what's going to happen on any episode and i was just kind of obsessed watching the show so much so that i asked him to make an album for dirty bird and then i went over to his studio and we made a track called ice cream cone that has this guy life on planets on the vocals and that just came out so i'm i'm selling it selling it oh, everywhere very cool awesome well yeah you hear you hear to hear check it out um cool question number five uh what is your most prized possession i think it's uh one year we had this guy dulk i don't know if you're familiar with his work but mm -hmm. if you aren't go go look up dulk he's from valencia spain and he came to our house and lived here for 11 days and painted like his largest indoor painting right like where we mounted it on the wow. wall and he like talked to my kids and told them the story of the paint the painting is insane it's like a flying crocodile crocodile being chased by little like rabbits on birds and the and there's like a mouse on top of the crocodile that's stolen an egg and and they're trying to escape this like ninja bunny squad mm. I, it's so weird but uh i just remember like my kids talking to him and then he would make <laughs> us like paella at night it was just a, kind <laughs> of cool and i i just really that painting is just amazing and it's massive that's a a great segue to um one of our hot topics uh today which involves rabbits so good good rabbits good. yeah yeah so good sneak preview there 
Awesome. It also might have been my dream last night. I think, I think about it. <laughs> crocodile, mouse. All and, right. Dude, know, I, I'm convoluted. looking at like all of his art. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's all definitely like dreamscapes, man. It's, it's, it's cool, very, right? Very cool. Wow. He yeah. was the artist on Dirty Bird one year. Wow. I love Probably it. Like I, three years ago. I love that model, by the way. You know, people have artist residencies. I don't know if you call it a residency. But yeah, it feels that we do. very it's much. Artist and yeah. resident. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. And do you. The guy. Do you, Oh, sorry. I was going to say, in this case, you inv you invited this artist to your house for, you know, a week yeah. and a half or whatever. But um, that that would be cool. I don't know if you have done it where you actually invite the artist for the label to come and, and stay somewhere as well, because that's also, also a fun aspect of residencies where people can be immersed in a different Yeah, street, you know? that's a good idea. Well, mm. the guy that is the artist in residence this year is named Chema Mendez, and he actually kind of is the reason that we got into nfts in some way because he just was our graphic designer for years and then all of a sudden he just started cranking out nfts and he did it so consistently that he actually became really big in nfts and make and now it's like i have to beg him to do any art for <laughs> but he has a huge drop called hand jabs that i don't know when it's, it's coming out early now early november and it's like it's like this but they're all painted uh, they're yeah. all hilarious and weird and they all <laughs> it's it's really good love that that's so cool right on all right well moving moving on then from there um let's head to question six which is if you could buy anything in the world digital physical service and experience that's currently for sale what would that be i don't know that's impossible you know what? I'm still FOMO, FOMOing over a Genesis Cyberkong. <laughs> That's my it answer. It makes sense. Yes, yes, it makes sense. We all have one. I'm right? like, should I buy one of these? No, don't do it. That's a lot of money. <laughs> don't buy one. You missed it. Just acknowledge that you missed well, it. Oh, uh, how many times have you, you know, done we just that? Had, uh, we just had Matt Kalish on the show from Daft yeah, Kings. That's what I was going to say. And, and, and he, if you want his advice, he, he thinks the 50 ETH floor, uh, he just uh, snapped up a uh, an ape bat is, is a bargain. So um, it's yeah, all perspective. I mean, that's the other one. That's the other one where I'm like, uh, should I just buy one? How, how early? Because I wait. know they're going to be worth a lot in like in like ten years when they're like whatever the Nike emblem is now the Board Apes Club or whatever. I'm going to be like, why didn't I just buy one at 36 or whatever? <laughs> How early Maybe. did you hear about the apes? Because Josh and I, our friend Teddy, like one day, he's like, there's this apes thing. It was like, yeah. it was like right when they were on they were sale. We like $1, literally $1, just oh, like, each. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, see, but and, then I can see why you didn't do it. Did you get one? No. Yeah, no. because $1,500 seems crazy. Yeah. And yeah. I can see why you wouldn't do it. I probably wouldn't have done it. And uh, and there's no way to really know. Yeah. I mean, they were yeah. at like 75 or something, right? So there has been like you don't really know what's going to happen. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and, even Gary V's NFTs, um, you know, the floor has been cut in half the last month. So it, it's it's a risky yeah. business. Yeah, the value prop at the time, you know, as far as we knew it was, do you want to buy this kooky digital art to be able to look? inside the digital bathroom at the digital bathroom wall you know what i mean like i was like really okay i don't know yeah. no that's okay i'm cool <laughs> who knew? No. but it's I, this is what this is my main thing my main question is like theoretically are there going to be so many projects that the top projects kind of wash out or are there going to be so many projects that the top projects just keep becoming more and more desirable that i don't know which way it's going to go like because there's all it just every week it's like oh now you have to get doodles but is doodles really going to be apes no well, well, we don't knows? know right we don't know we don't yeah. know maybe we projects we can't we'll say value. tune in next week to edge of nft right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you know <laughs> we'll let it we'll let it we'll let it go all right question seven guys if you could pass on one of your personality traits to the next generation, what would that be? Just like the grinding and working super hard and then just getting 
rejected and just coming back again. That's like the only reason that Dirty Bird works. <laughs> we just eat it shit and then we just try it again. Make it happen. Yeah, keep rolling. That, gr- <laughs> that grit, man. Right on. Yeah. Question eight. If you could eliminate one of your personality traits from the next generation, what would that be? That's easier even. That is like I get wound up and tied up in minutia and like the font on this flyer and like all the little, little tiny, tiny things. And some people might say that might be why everything looks okay, but I don't know. I don't think it's important. You do, but you don't, but you do, but you don't. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. All right. Little, little easier. Question nine. What did you do just before joining us on the podcast? I just took a shower and then realized my iPad wasn't charged at all. And so I got a big power block and st- <laughs> like I was just running around trying to get my iPad set up after getting out of the shower. That's it. Well, I'm glad you made it. We didn't have to endure a, a reboot process or whatever. Yeah, I feel so, like we made it. It's yeah. now it's going to make it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for just coming like in everyone. Clean, too. We appreciate that. <laughs> That's true. All right. Last one. Question 10. Uh, what are you going to do next after the podcast? I have a, I have to meet with Chema, the guy that's doing hand jobs because he's finishing flyer for the new get well, get real tour that I'm not allowed to announce, but you just found out about. <laughs> ah, awesome. Right on. Yo, are, are, uh, is he going to be in New York as well? I don't think Chema's my sister Emily, who is the project manager of this entire project, is sitting here on the floor. <laughs> is Chema going to New York? No, he's not. Well, uh, happy to connect with him, and uh, you know, I'm looking at the website. It looks like a really dope project. So uh, feel free to connect us. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I have, a, I have a, a growing obsession already in the few minutes since I discovered this uh, via your, your uh, He's great. suggestion. He's very so cool. savvy as well at marketing and just getting moving around the space and stuff. He's great. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks so much for uh, sharing all of your responses to our Edge Quick Hitters. Lots of fun. We appreciate it. Heard. We also have some hot topics to cover. Yeah. Uh, and a, um, a couple? Yeah, I think so. All right. Awesome. Uh, first hot topic that's heating things up is Tom Brady. I never heard of him before. We'll have to catch me up on that. But uh, NFT Venture Autograph ropes in R&B sensation The Weeknd. Uh, on, in August, Tom Brady's NFT platform Autograph launched its first collectibles featuring entire feature, focused entirely on sports. But the company has broader ambitions in the entertainment space and is adding some renowned members to its board to help bring those plans to life. And uh, it added Canadian Music The Weekend to its board of directors and, oh, we'll launch a music collectibles vertical. Yeah, and we've seen this little pattern here, right? We, we saw that uh, when we were talking about uh, Candy Digital, right, as well. Um, just trying to move out of, well, in this case, sports, right? But I think there's also platforms that have a certain niche and, and maybe they think it's time to expand and grow. Um, we saw that with DraftKings saying that, you know, they want to do things with, with famous uh, personalities and entertainers outside of sports as well. Did you see the when Tom Brady threw his 600th touchdown, the receiver gave it to a fan and they had to go back and get the ball and Tom yeah. Brady had to give him like a Bitcoin <laughs> yes. and, a, and some other stuff so that they could turn the ball into an NFT for that store. Uh, oh, is that? Wow. Did they end up giving him a Bitcoin? Because I know he yeah, got they some gave merch. him a Bitcoin and something else. That's cool. Um, there was a little bit of uh, fud in the news about him not getting a fair trade. So I'm glad that they up up the game there because that was a very generous uh, offer in terms of uh, giving the the ball back. And uh, yeah, yeah. Fun. I mean, Tom Brady got on that. You know that Peyton Man- when Peyton Manning and his and Eli do that. They just watch a game. That's where I saw this. And they and Tom Brady was like, yeah, the the guy that got the ball in the crowd, he should have held on to it because then he would have had all the leverage, but he just handed it right back to the receiver. <laughs> He's like, he, he shouldn't have done that. He would have had so much leverage. 
I know, man. I know. I felt I felt bad for kind of the guy that had gotten it and giving it back at that moment, yeah. you know, because you're kind of dogging him out a little bit there. But I think people keep giving him stuff. I think Gronk, uh, who has a couple NFT related things, just kicked over some stuff in collaboration with one of the projects he's on. It was like another 30 grand worth or so. But did you actually um, hear? Did they did they say that, that he's turning that into an NFT, that, that bowl? They, they I think they did say that, but I don't oh, know. Wow. I mean, you're just talking to me. I don't know. I don't know. Well, that's that's awesome though, dude. That's like so cool. Yeah, I mean, hey, all this stuff, uh, autograph, Brady, okay. the weekend. I mean, like yeah. it's hard to get bigger than the weekend right now. Like, if you want to raise awareness about your project and do some cool shit, I mean, like that's that's a good way to go. Totally. This is one topic also I feel like is important that some people get scared when because they think all these like super megatron people are going to come into the space and ruin it but actually this happens in house music all the time like diplo will decide that he's playing house music now that just happened that actually freaks a whole bunch of people out but i know from being in the industry for so long that all that does is make all the house djs more desirable and their fees go up and like everybody gets more business so I think that it's the same in NFTs. Like once all these huge players come in, the whole market, all boats rise, you know, like it, everybody's going to go up. All your investments will go up, hopefully. Totally. Yeah. And it's adoption, right? Too, like for, for yeah. such a large mainstream group of people that don't even have wallets or know how to even interact in the space, right? It helps make that happen. We, we, uh, we're going to talk to uh, Jeremy Bourne in a minute, but should we hit the next hot topic? Uh... Before he, uh, oh, here he is. Yeah. Should we, should we jump in and have a chat with Jeremy? Yeah. I think we should. We know that guy. Okay. What's up? <laughs> Jeremy, what's up, man? Good to see you. This is uh, a, not much. A, just, it's a perfect uh, segue, to get to man. To do this at this time was just, uh, I, I wish somebody was filming what I had to do to get here. Hey, you got like nothing <laughs> on your to do list, bro. Well, I know. Well, you know. We, uh, it's fine. Our, our other guests here, uh, not to, uh, there's only one of the guests, but the, there may be another person in this group that had some uh, difficulties getting uh, getting going here this morning. So <laughs> it's it's the NFT hustle. Uh, all, all of us are sort of, or a lot of us going over to New York, a lot going on, man. But, um, Really excited to have you here, and I think it's a it's a perfect topic to to cover because we were just talking about the future of music and where it's going, and then you guys have a drop. We're talking about how to how to do those successfully, and you guys have done a lot of them. So uh, excited to to match up, uh, do this little guest matchup today. Yeah. Also, I want to ask you this question, Jeremy. I, I brought up something early in the episode before you were here, and I just want to follow up because I think it's maybe the case. Did you have a lemonade stand when you were a kid? Absolutely. Yeah. And did you have like a dice game involved with that? You remember that? Man, yeah. Dude, you know what? It's a... I don't know. I don't know what happened that day with that interview, the first interview, man, but I went like deep on my personal life with you guys in a way that yeah. I have. <laughs> so I don't know what you bring out in me, but uh yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. So, so we're we're man. just we're just talking to our, our guest Claude and, and we were because we asked this question to our guests, like what's the you know, what did you sell when you were a kid, basically? First thing you sold. And he he said lemonade stand, and I was like, yeah, one of our previous guests had one, but they had like a dice game, and I didn't realize it was you. And we're going to be talking to you, so that's that's perfect. That's perfect. What were you? What did they get if they rolled the right, uh, the right dice? It's like so cookies. You guys or remember something? like those card shows? Like you go to a convention center, and like they're I don't know if you guys went to like basketball cards, football cards, and they yeah. have these card shows, right? Mm -hmm. There was this cool thing that I loved as a kid. There was always a stand, and they'd have a dice game, right? They'd have two dice, or no, was it two or four dice? I can't remember. But long story short, if you rolled, you know, a three, you got you know this card that was just kind of okay. If you rolled this, it was better. It was better. It was better. If you got, I think it was four dices, and if you got all sixes, then you got something ridiculous. You got like a Michael Jordan rookie card. So I was like, oh, cool. So I took a line out of that book. I remember nice. going to Lamppost Pizza back in the day, and I was lucky enough to, you know, do this claw machine. And I won the Beavis and Butthead t-shirt oh. <laughs> out of that claw machine. And I thought it was gold, right? I thought it was probably <laughs> worth a million bucks, at least to me, because nobody could get it. So that was the grand prize I put together. Nice. The Beavis and Butthead t-shirt, <laughs> a, a slammer that was Beavis and Butthead. I put together this Beavis and Butthead package. So if you were lucky enough to roll all sixes, that's what you could get. Beautiful. Wow. Thanks. Thanks for diving a little bit deeper on that one. That's good. Okay, we should we we should dive into the topic at hand. Uh, yeah, Josh and or or, or or Jeremy, what do we want to chat about today? Let, let let's, let's well let's up. start let's start with uh, 
these rebel rabbits, man. Um, been hearing about this project, uh, seeing some of the the marketing going out, sort of uh, the FOMO building up. What's what's going on there? Um, th this is clear. You guys have done so much in the space that I think has probably been built into your thinking on this project. So I'm excited to hear more. Yeah, rebel rabbits is a really special one for us. Um, this character of a rebel rabbit with this mask with an X on its eye. Um, it's special to us because it's representative of everybody, all of us here right now, everybody in crypto that's leading the charge and towards moving the world to a better and more decentralized place, right? Um, so it's, it's representing everybody in this crypto movement, whether you're in crypto, DeFi, NFTs, doesn't really matter. And I think because of that, it's deeply resonated with a lot of people. Um, it's weird to say that even before this big launch, people have already gotten tattoos of Rebel Rabbits because it just felt so deep, uh, you know, to them. And now we're kind of moving away from wax, you know, where this was born inside of Bitcoin Origins and bringing this as a unique set to the Ethereum blockchain. So, you know, we do, I think our, our free claims for the, the lucky few are today. Uh, and I think we open up the pre-sale starting tomorrow and then the actual public sale is on the 31st. But yeah, we've gotten a lot of traction. We just did a Twitter Spaces, uh, what was it, two days ago. Mark Cuban, Roham ended up showing up and it just like went from 125 people to like thousands in like two seconds. And uh, it was a good uh, watershed moment, I think, for us in the company. And a lot of people got exposed to Rebel Rabbits and some of the other projects that we're working on, um, you know, on the Flow blockchain and Tezos as well. That's amazing, dude. And like I saw like on your roadmap, you have all kinds of like fun stuff happening. One of the things that jumped out to me was like this like treasure hunts. Uh, is there anything you could share with us about what you have in mind for that? Let's just say that if, if you know anything about Bitcoin origins and our history is like we were one of the first to bring storytelling into the NFT space. So everything is going to be based and predicated on a story. What what is the why behind Rebel Rabbits? Right. Why are they here? Why are you putting on a mask? What happens when you put on the mask? What do you see? Right from there, then clues are delivered and you can start going down the path of this treasure hunt. And if anybody knows what happened on Bitcoin origins, before anybody was really in the space giving a lot back to the community, we were some of the earliest innovators in treasure hunts and giving back. So we gave away uh, almost maybe six to eight months ago, which seems like 10 years ago now in the NFT space, um, we brought back uh, the ability for somebody to win an entire Bitcoin to which that person ended up sharing it with the other four finalists. So they each got like an equivalent of $10,000 each. So we will be giving back to the community in a big way um, and pretty excited about that. But yeah, that's all I can say about the treasure hunts. That's got cool. Uh, Claude, you, uh, I, I put the website in our chat here. Did you have a chance to check out the artwork, man? For Rebel Rabbits? Yeah. No, I haven't seen it yet. Let me, is it, where, yeah. how do I find this? Oh, uh, just rebelrabbits.io. Uh, I see it. Okay. Yeah. And, um, another thing that it sounds I thought, awesome. Yeah, it's really. Oh yeah, I'm, cool. I, I think the comic. I'm seeing something about comics. What's that all about? Um, Looks great. Yeah, so comics will be a part of this for sure. Um, I can't say how yet, um, but I mean, if you could just see the art, I mean, it lends really well to comics and story. Yeah, uh, we've been winding again in the comic space for a while. So whether that's digital or physical is yet to be determined. Um, but it definitely will be a part of this experience. You know, at the end of the day you'll understand what's happening, that this is not a PFP set. This is not just a generative art set. The mask is your entry, as we say, into this decentralized rebellion. And the mask is the thing that happens and that you need to be able to get access to the next phase, which is a lot behind it. So pretty excited to kick this whole thing off. Right on. No, I was just going to say, I think that's where you're going, Josh. We heard uh, that you guys are working on a, a new music NFT marketplace also. What is the scoop there? Yeah, so actually that evolved from when we were last on the show from a, like solely a music NFT marketplace, and now it's more of a broad marketplace. And this is going to be on Flow. It's called the Gaia Marketplace. You can sign up for early access on ongaia.com. Um, but long story short is we're doing our first launch, which is our internal IP called Ballers. Uh, it's a it's a basketball-inspired generative art set, all pixel-based with all these made-up teams um, and all these, you know, men and women having different components, um, you know, type of punks feel to an extent, uh, but all basketball players. So uh, that's that's something that just turned into something way more than I think what we expected uh, has gotten a lot of traction and I think is going to be a pretty huge success. And that launches on uh, November 5th. So that's Ballers. That'll kick off our Gaia platform. Um, and then we'll have some subsequent launches with some very, you know, big and famous athletes. And that'll expand into a number of different things. Music is just going to be one facet of it, but it's really going to focus on, you know, music, entertainment, a lot of sports uh, and pop culture. 
So we're going to be working with some of the biggest brands, athletes, musicians, celebrities to bring them into the space in a thoughtful way uh, in a completely verticalized marketplace so you can actually find what you're looking for quickly uh, without brands having to worry about their Mickey Mouse NFP being next or NFT being next to something that might be nefarious uh, as it's like on other platforms. So solving a big problem, I think, for brands too. That's awesome. One, one thing we were talking about earlier, Jeremy, be curious to get your thoughts and weigh in is sort of the distribution side of music. Um, you know, it, it's great to sort of create that fan uh, purchase experience, but what are your thoughts on distribution? Say, you know, Coca-Cola wants to use, you know, 10 seconds of a song in, in an ad. How does that work in the world of, of blockchain decentralization? Not to put you in the spot, but curious if you've thought about this. Yeah, we thought about it a lot. I don't, I don't know if there's a a solid fix or answer or a solution that anybody's created that like actually works because in music, uh, just like anything else, uh, but music specifically, there's so many hands in the honeypot, if you will. Right. So being able to cut in everybody effectively, like blockchain is a great solution for that. Right. And then you have pr private key management and there's a lot of solutions that allow for that, but you also have to get consensus and a lot of people to agree to what the plan is and how they're going to be paid. And then they have to figure out how to sign up for a crypto wallet, which a lot of them are not willing to do or they're just not ready to do yet. So I think there's solutions to be able to do that. And there's awesome use cases of people that are trying to do this to where, you know, I don't know if you guys saw Spotty, uh, Spotty.Wi-Fi or something like that. Like, go look at that because it's not big at all. Um, the You know, I, I bought this NFT because I thought it was interesting, but just look at what that guy did. And I think that is what the future of what this can be related to music and how you can incorporate ownership into your albums and give people certain rights. And it's easier with that of independent artists, artists because they're in control of their destiny so they can say whatever goes. But as it relates to people that are part of management companies and record labels, I mean, it gets really, really complex. So I think it's going to take time to be able to get there. Yeah. I, I agree with that. And even just on the licensing end of it, it's so complicated because I would say even the majority of licenses that come through here, they'll call you and be like, can you get the master and publishing side and everybody on this track to agree to be in the show in the next 30 minutes? Otherwise, we have three other tracks that we might use. Like it's not, it's so everything has to almost, it would be amazing if it could be on the blockchain and you're just like, Yes, here it is. Boom. Absolutely, man. Yeah, the possibilities are, um, they're endless. And I got to check out this one. You said spotty, spotty Wi-Fi. Yeah, uh, it was, it was just something that. I found. I thought it was really interesting. Um, and, and nobody really knows about it. Like I said, he hasn't gotten a lot of a lot of play, but he's doing some cool stuff. He did like a punk's anthem. But yeah, I don't know the guy. I reached out to him on LinkedIn, just said, hey, good job. I bought your NFT. I thought, I think what you're doing is cool and more people should yeah. know about it. So yeah, check it yeah. out. Lo love the innovation there and love the direction you guys are going. I know you're always moving a thousand miles an hour, uh, bringing these projects to life, Jeremy. Um, so cool. And so glad that you could, uh, you could join us today, man. Where, um, where, sh yeah, dude, where should folks go to, to follow Rebel Rabbits, Gaia, and, uh, and make sure they're uh, up to date on the latest and greatest? Yeah, so for Rebel Rabbits, uh, definitely join us on Discord. Um, that's kind of a lot of where uh, we drop some information about the upcoming sale, what you can do. People are going crazy over trying to uh, get certain roles that give them access to the pre-sale. So I think today is like the last day that you can really like get into the pre-sale. Um, so go to rebelrabbits.io and then you can click the link for the Discord. Uh, for Ballers, um, that's ballers with a Z at the end, dot X, Y, Z. Uh, to learn more about that. That's going to be a fun set. That's going to turn into a game. There's going to be game mechanics. There's going to be some cool stuff. Uh, Mark Cuban, I think, just agreed to uh, doing a one of one Mark Cuban-esque uh, ballers, and he's going to digitally sign it. So maybe you'll be lucky enough to get that one. Roham, we're doing a custom one. We're going to have stuff with Team Flow. And if you get somebody who has a Flow jersey, uh, it may or may not give you utility to something really cool. So we're trying to just, you know, always have fun and innovate at the same time. And uh, yeah, just check us out or you can follow us on uh, Twitter at Genius NFT. Beautiful. Thanks for stopping by, man. appreciate your Thanks time. For and I'm sure we'll we'll chat again soon. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Have a good Thanks, brother. Later. Take care. Well, good stuff, fun stuff. NFT Genius guys continuing to innovate and make cool things happen. Love, love what they're doing. 
Should we tell the listeners about our Beavis and Butthead uh, t-shirt raffle that we got? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I think we can. Um, no, but I think, um, yeah, guys, I think, I think that's the, uh, I think that's the show. But um, yeah. before we break, man, well, first again, I want to say thanks to Claude for, for joining us and sharing so many great insights and uh, all the fun stuff you have coming up with Dirty Bird. But we got to let people you. know you're welcome, man. You're welcome. Where where can folks go to continue to follow you to make sure they're up to date on all the latest and greatest coming out of uh, your innovation engine? Uh, you can follow our project at Dirty Bird Art on Twitter, or you can just go to the regular Dirty Bird website to find Flight Club Project. That's just DirtyBirdRecords.com, and it will it has a page on our website. It doesn't have its own separate website right now because we're trying to like make everything work together but that's how you find about a project it's flight club it's 90 90 birds and the utility is just going to get better and better inside of events metaverse all the kind of music drops everything awesome so check them out there also i think we're going to be doing a fun uh, giveaway i think we're going to be giving away uh one of those nfts which is amazing yeah. it's super generous um, so keep an eye out listeners on our socials for the details of how to score that bad boy. So, uh, we really do appreciate that. It's amazing. All right. Well, I think we have reached the outer limit at the edge of NFTs for today. So thanks for exploring with us. We've got space for more adventures on the starship. So invite your friends and recruit some cool strangers that will make this journey all so much better. How? Go to iTunes right now, rate us and say something awesome. Then go to edgeofnft.com to dive further down the rabbit hole. And remember, we always invite you to co-create and build with us at Edge of NFT. We are unlocking a whole new way to connect and collaborate with us through our own NFT drop, Living Tree NFTs. Through this project, we will be planting tens of thousands of real trees. This collection is not only beautiful generative art, but will also be the foundation of everything we do with Edge of NFT in our community for years to come. On top of that, living tree holders like you will co-create and participate in our podcast and access exclusive events and killer contests. You'll be frontline for other NFT drops, as well as a long, bright future of branching opportunities to come. Get on the whitelist by dropping us a line at contact at edgeofnft.com or tweet at us at edgeofnft and we'll share with you the steps required to get in the mix. Lastly, be sure to tune in next time for more great NFT content. Thanks for sharing this time with us today. The views and opinions expressed on the Edge of NFT podcast reflect solely those views and opinions of the show creators and its guests. We are learning as we go just like you. Please make sure to do your own research. Our podcast is not financial advice. There are multiple strategies and not all strategies fit all people. You understand that you are using any and all information available on or through this podcast at your own risk.